welcome back to my studio. This is Emma. It's a Monday morning. I hope you've had a lovely weekend, although obviously by the time you watch this, it'll be Wednesday, because it takes me like a couple of days to film it and edit it and put it all together. So it's in a nice package for you. And a very warm welcome to you if you're new here. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you for your thumbs up. I'm waving my thumbs around like this. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but apparently it gets more people to come and see this lovely channel. Um, which I think is great. The more people, the merrier, is what I say. Um, and if one person understands what I'm talking about and gets on with it and, and is inspired by anything I say or do, you know, that's just magical to me. It's just so lovely to know you're out there, guys. Thank you so much for being here. So, as I say, I hope you had a nice weekend. I did... Oh, I don't know if you can hear the geese. The geese are chatting. They're sitting on a nest some of the time and they get quite... Um, get quite chatty if you go near it so I don't I don't think anybody's actually out there at the moment but you never know they're very good watchdogs and they're really good at cutting our grass and they're just lovely to have around they're such good companions they've got characters real characters so anyway that's that's an aside I've got loads of stuff done again this weekend I'm still clearing out would you believe my loft space above here used to be packed to the gunnels with all of my stuff um, loads of stuff overflow from the studio fabrics that I haven't touched for years and it's all inch by inch just getting moved out and I'm loving it but the hilarious thing is really that my daughter then went through everything and said oh mum can I have this can I have that and so she's got a big stash back in the loft but the wonderful thing is it's not mine anymore it's nothing to do with me whatever she wants to do with it is up to her I'm quite happy to store it for the time being you know and if she wants to use it that's wonderful the rest has like gone to charity shops and stuff so I've had a really positive weekend. All sorts of funny little jobs have got done. And you know how that is when they're all kind of piling up and you think, oh, I'd just like to do that. Hoover this corner and just, you know, wash that bit down and dust the piano. Because I want I want to uh, let my piano go as well. But it's, you know, it needs a bit of TLC in the meantime. Got to look after these things. So here we are again, back in my studio. And this is where we're at. I'm just picking the bits off a bit. I've got one, bits of fluff. Um... This is kind of where the landscape is looking, or how the landscape is looking at the moment. Um, I'm calling it a moody landscape, in case you hadn't noticed. I felt as though it's become this very interesting set of colours again. Purple is just my thing at the moment. I'm just kind of obsessed with purple. Um, all the work for my um, exhibition coming up, which is like setting up not next week, but the week after, which is not very far off now. Um, it's all purple. It's incredible. I don't know where it's come from. I've never worked in so much purple. So today I'm going to be doing some more stitching on down here and we'll try and get the mountain on as well. And then we'll be thinking about what we're going to put on to add some interest to it. Okay, so I might be asking you for some ideas, you know, because you always have good ideas. I love, I love it when you leave me a comment. It's so nice to chat to you and it's lovely to hear what your ideas are because what I see is not necessarily what you see and what I would like to do with it isn't necessarily what you would do with it and I just love to have that chat with you. It's so nice as you can't, you know, can't actually be here in person. It's the next best thing, I think. So I think the best thing is just to get on with it. Stop wittering on here and get on with it. I've got to move some stuff off my sewing machine because I've been working on it over the weekend um, getting this piece. It's my last piece for the exhibition um, and it's just coming together quite nicely and I just need to get it off the sewing machine though so I can get on with this. Okay so I've got this silver all stitched down and I've just done it with a really quite simple amount of stitching just because as I said in my last video I wanted to try and keep this fabric it's got this interesting little folding going on with it and i feel as though it gives a sense of movement to the water here so i'm now choosing some pinkish threads and i'm just looking to see what i fancy but actually most of these pinks are just really too pink they're not got this deep sort of it's almost like a purpley pink really this one i think so they are not any good and i think the one that i'm going to use Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, that's no good at all. Let's put that out of the way. I think the one I'm going to choose is this one. Although it's knocked the same exact colour as that, that's absolutely fine. I think it's very similar to what's underneath, actually. If I lift this up, it's actually a similar sort of shade to that. So that's quite nice. That'll tie it all together quite quite nicely. And I'm just going to do some random stitching on here and get it, get it down. I'm going to be having things... I don't know what exactly in the foreground, but... 
whatever I stitch is going to be a little bit covered up anyway. So let's choose this one and get on with it. What I love about creating pieces like this is the more it gets stitched, the better it gets and the easier it is you know, just to put more stitching on top once you've got your first initial stitching done. It's so good. Um, now, if you're new to free machine embroidery, um, I've got a darning foot on here, or I think you can call it an embroidery foot. This is a very small one. I'm still getting used to it because I'm not using my normal machine. And on this one, you lower the feed dog teeth, obviously, and I'm not fiddling with the tension on this one. It seems to be okay. On my other machine, I actually reduce the tension a little bit on the top. And you have your stitch length on zero because you're going to actually control the stitch length. I think it's a little bit thick at this corner. I'm just taking it, taking it slow. And along this edge, I want to make sure that the lace comes over the top of the underneath bit. So I'm just going to make sure that things are in the right place. Let's pull that up a little bit. That's better. That's better. Here we go. Ooh, now it's gone down again. And this is the beauty of free machine embroidery, okay? This is, you do this so quickly. If you try to do this with your normal foot on, you'd just be there for days. But this, you can go anywhere you want to. The machine just does all the work and I just love it. So now I've got that edge down, I'm going to just start waggling my way all the way down here. I love it when you start to get the pins out because I have to say I don't really appreciate being stabbed by a pin which does happen occasionally doesn't it you know so I'm just going to waggle and wiggle I kind of want to allow some of the texture to stay so I'm not going to over stitch it but I'm just going to hold it all in place and let the lace tell its own story really I'm just about to turn this corner in. I've got all the side held in place with some stitching, which helps enormously because I have to say the lace is quite bouncy and I've actually trimmed a little bit of the lace off here so I haven't got too much bulk going on for this corner. And I'm just going to have a little bit. It's a little bit, little bit fiddly doing this, but you kind of aim to get it tucked in at a slight angle so it's not at a 90 degree angle with the, the bit going underneath. And then that just helps to um, keep it from showing at the side. Very cleverly pinned from the other side there. Did you notice that? Gosh. And then we'll just pin that as well. And you can see beautifully all the wiggly waggly stitching on the back. I mean, that's just, just so fun. It's so random. It's, it's actually quite straight, some of it. I think I haven't still quite got the hang of this machine, but it's, it's fine. Nobody's, nobody knows that because it's hidden on the front. It just disappears when you turn over the front, you know? And because you've got the purpley colour coming through with the pink, it's really quite nice. I like that. So I've done the same on this corner here, and I've just trimmed back the lace a little bit again. And I'm just going to fiddle, fiddle and fold. Oops. The lace is a little bit bouncy, so it kind of pings around a bit. But once I get my pin in, it'll be fine. See, I would have probably done that from the top if I wasn't showing you, but I wanted to show you the underneath of there. And I have to say, doing something like this, this sort of faffing about with fabric, to me, is just the greatest relaxation. <laughs> I can think of nothing else when I'm trying to fix a corner like that. Okay, so that was a bit funny. My, my camera stopped working there for a moment because it said the memory card was full and I thought, it can't be full. I've got 32 gigabytes or whatever on it. And then I realized I'd actually swapped them around. I had my little one in from my little camera, which is only eight. And so understandably, I was incorrect on that. It was actually full. So I'm gonna finish stitching this down. Which is easy peasy now, I've got it all pinned in place. And then I will 
get the mountain on. Let's move some mountains. So here we are. This is looking nice now and it's so much easier to handle now it's got stitching on. And because it's got the stabiliser on the back as well, that gives it a nice bit of stiffness and you start to get that lovely sound that I really enjoy because it means that you're really getting on with it, you're making progress and it's holding together and becoming something. Um, I rather like the back actually, I think that's made a rather nice frame like that. So I'm going to turn it over and we're going to get the mountains. Here come the mountains, look at this, here's one I made earlier. So it's a question of whereabouts I want that to be. This is all done by eye. There we go, I think that would be something like that would be fine. It's This material doesn't half fray, but I think we might actually move it up a little bit. I want a bit more of the silver. Ooh, how much of the water do I want? Mm, I think we might just move that up a little bit. Anyway, so um, what I was saying, oh yes, the um, this fabric really frays and I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get my heat gun out and I'll do the edges and then I thought, oh no, I remember when I tried to iron it, it went a really strange colour. It's something, it obviously reacts to the heat because it's um, whatever it's made from. So I thought, that's a bad idea. We'll just go with it fraying a little bit. It won't matter. Not worried about that. Not scared of fraying, okay? I'm not afraid of wobbles and I'm not afraid of fraying. We'll just go with it. This is the whole thing about working with ta with um, fabrics like this. Unless you're doing patchwork where you're going to have really neat edges. Um, and even turning the edges in like this, I feel like it's almost like... It's a little bit dangerous because there's a danger that you'll just go and try and make everything really neat. But fortunately, fabrics wobble and when you sew your edges in, they're never going to be completely straight. And that's the, that's the pleasure of working with them. That's uh, my favourite thing about textiles is they move and they shift. And they don't necessarily do what you expect them to. So I love that. So I think we're good to go now and we'll just go and do some mountain stitching. Something suitable for a mountain. Okay, so I've just got myself started here because that's always the tricky bit. And I'm just going to go find it along the edge but I'm not going to go all the way along the edge in one straight line because that will just really draw your eye to that. I'm going to do toings and froings. I'm kind of working from the top downwards so that any of the bulk of the fabric gets pushed down over. And I'm just making it up as I go along. Out. I'm just going to twizzle it round here so that I've got control over doing this side because if I try and do it backwards I can't actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not much not much good if you can't see what you're doing, eh? And you can't see where you're going. And that might be alright in some situations, but not when you're trying to stitch a mountain down. that a little bit more. I'm not very happy with that so we'll just do that a little bit more. This is what I mean when I say the fabric doesn't always do what you what you want it to do but the thing is it's about the overall look um, when you get it all done and all stitched it's going to look fine so I don't worry about little odd bits like that where the fabric seems to buckle or twist I just keep going I just keep going and the whole thing will come out when we get to the end it'll all be fine and I can always come back and do a little bit more stitching on top of what I've done I can even add another colour in if I want to. There are no rules. This is the beautiful thing. There are no rules. And this is one of the few things in life where there are no rules. There's nothing to obey. It's just your instinct and your intuition that says, yes, I'm going to do it this way. I need to tuck this end in again. I'm just going to bring it in as close as I can. It's 
all a bit of a game this, you know, it's just make it up as you go along and hope for the best. A bit like life really, that's a good one isn't it? <laughs> ah, I like that. Just make it up as you go along and hope for the best. Back a little bit, give me a bit of space there. Get that pinned in. I'm being very careful. I'm just not stitching anywhere near the pin, guys, okay? There we go. So I'll show you that when it's finished. All right, so there we go. That's it stitched up. You can see the stitching on the mountain there. I did some ziggy zaggy lines going that way as well, just to give it a little bit of contrast so it wasn't all just shiny. That sort of makes it a bit more matte if you put a lot more stitching on. It changes the texture of the fabric. So that's what I've done. So you can see now, it's fairly simple. It's a very simple sort of background for something. And I really don't know what's going to go on there next. So if you've got any ideas, I'm very happy. If you'd like to leave me a comment that says, I would do this, or why don't you do this? I've got no idea. I've got a feeling it might be something going all the way along, but I don't know. It could be two things. It could be, you know, some grasses over here and something else over here. I don't know. It'll probably be one type of thing I think but again you could have a clump of something and a clump of something or it might have a moon I don't know who knows it's all oh I'm just turning over the... oh yes I'll turn you the back because then you can see that's what I mean about the ziggy zaggies going there we see not a lot of stitching very little stitching on the silver a little bit stitching on the lace you know how easy is that to do and then you turn it over and it just looks amazing the colors are just gorgeous I have to say, I'm in love with these colours, they're absolutely beautiful and I think the silver just kind of makes these two shine and then there's this very simple dark going on up here that just is quiet, it's just quietly in the background there and it's letting all the other colours shine out. So as I say, let me know what you think I should put on it next and we will see what happens. It's all in the mix really, I have no idea myself at this, at this precise moment I've got no idea at all. So thanks ever again. Thanks. Oh, I can't get my words out now. It's nearly lunchtime. Can you tell? I can't get my words out. I'm just going to say bye for now. Thanks so much for watching and have a really good week and I'll see you again very soon in my studio.